Over the years, land has been cleared for housing and industrial developments, shopping malls, highways and cropland. Many old trees have been cut down for firewood. Wooden fence posts that provided nesting cavities have now been replaced with metal posts. With modernization, the supply of natural nesting cavities for bluebirds and other native cavity nesters has been greatly reduced. Compounding the problem of habitat loss has been the introduction of two imported species, the house sparrow and the European starling, into North America. Both starlings and sparrows are cavity nesters and both are very aggressive. House sparrows are small enough to enter any hole that a bluebird can and are so aggressive that they will chase away the more timid bluebird. Starlings can be excluded from bluebird boxes by using the correct size entrance hole, but will outcompete bluebirds for woodpecker holes and other natural nesting cavities. During the summer, bluebirds feed mainly on insects. In the winter, bluebirds depend on many kinds of wild berries for their food supply. However, the supply of wild berries also has decreased over the years. The few berries that remain are often stripped quickly by large flocks of starlings and other birds. Even though the bluebird population has greatly decreased, the future still can be promising for them. The most important step we can take to help bring back the bluebird is to provide nesting sites by setting out a bluebird box or starting a bluebird trail. A bluebird trail is a series of bluebird boxes placed along a prescribed route. In areas where nesting boxes have been put up in suitable habitat, bluebird populations are increasing. Bluebirding is a great environmental, hands-on project that people of all ages can enjoy. By following some basic instructions, chances are very good that you'll be able to attract and enjoy bluebirds. A good bluebird box should be well ventilated, watertight, have drainage holes, be easy to monitor, and easy to clean. Cedar and redwood are ideal materials, although you can use plywood and other types of wood. Boxes can be painted or stained if a light color is used. Treated lumber should not be used because of its toxic content. A bluebird box should never have a perch, as sparrows and wrens are attracted to perches. Boxes should have a round entrance hole of one and a half inches. Oval holes should measure one and three eighths inch by two and a quarter inch. Mounting the bluebird box in a smooth round pipe is probably the best and simplest mounting system to use. Three quarter inch conduit works well, but any smooth scrap round pipe will also work. Coating the pole with the high quality automotive grease will also help to keep predators off the box. Hardware cloth placed under a box helps to prevent snake predation. Do not mount bluebird boxes on a fence line or on trees. Raccoons are known to walk along fence lines and may find your boxes. Habitat is the key factor to consider when setting up a bluebird trail. Open rural country with scattered trees and low or sparse ground cover is best. Suitable habitat should include perch sites such as a fence line, wire, or tree branches where bluebirds may perch to search for food. Look for these when you're selecting a location for your nesting boxes. If bluebirds do not like the habitat, they probably will not use your boxes. Pasture land, acreages, parks away from human traffic, and mowed areas such as cemeteries and golf courses are all good locations for a bluebird trail. Avoid brushy and heavily wooded areas. This is the habitat of the house wren. Avoid areas where the house sparrow is abundant, such as farmsteads and feedlots. Finally, avoid areas of heavy pesticide use. Bluebirds depend upon insects as food. Mount nesting boxes so the entrance hole is about five feet above the ground. If possible, face the box away from prevailing winds and facing towards a tree or shrub which is within 100 feet of the box. Trees and shrubs provide a landing spot for the young bluebirds when they first leave the box. This will keep them off the ground, away from predators. Space boxes at least 100 to 150 yards apart. Boxes can be mounted in pairs in areas where tree swallows are abundant. When paired, mount boxes 5 to 10 feet apart. This provides nesting sites for both species and helps to prevent competition between them. Different species of birds usually do not mind nesting close to each other. Only put up a bluebird box if you plan to monitor it. Check your bluebird boxes at least once a week during the nesting season until chicks are close to fledging. Do not open the box after nestlings are 12 to 14 days old. If you do, the nestlings might leave the box before they're able to fly, greatly reducing their chance of survival. Always remove house sparrow nests immediately. In Nebraska, have your bluebird boxes in place by mid-March when the bluebirds return from the winter migration and are looking for nesting sites. 
Foxes put up later in the nesting season could be successful as well. Bluebirds usually nest in late March or early April, depending on weather conditions. They usually have two broods per season, but three broods are possible. Be sure you can recognize a bluebird nest. It's cup-shaped nest that is usually made of 100% woven grass. Occasionally, pine needles may be used. Bluebirds usually lay four to five light blue eggs, but may lay as many as six or seven. A small percentage of their eggs may be white. The incubation period for bluebird eggs is 12 to 14 days. Nestlings remain in the nest 18 to 21 days before they fledge. Remove bluebird nests and those of other birds as soon as the young birds have fledged. Keep records of the activity on your bluebird trail. This information is valuable to bluebirds across Nebraska. Annual nesting report forms are mailed to members or are available online. Don't be discouraged if your nesting boxes are not used the first year. If bluebirds are not common in your area, it may take them a few seasons to find your new box. Bluebirds generally return to the same area each year. Bluebird trails have been an extremely effective method of reestablishing the bluebird populations across North America. I'm Jan Hingstrom with the University of Nebraska Extension. Thanks to Bluebirds Across Nebraska for content and photos.